These days, Nicholas Azar dresses in black, but for many years he wore a colorful uniform, a reflective vest. This was for his job as an airport attendant. At the beginning, Nicholas Azar guided passengers of Sky Team Cargo towards the gates for departure. He was promoted throughout the company until he reached one of the most important positions, manager of finance. He has a master's in business, speaks six languages, and in addition to all of this, now he is a priest. I probably struggled with the idea, but never allowed it to become something that I reflected on in the front of my mind. I would busy myself with my work, or I would busy myself with um, working with youth. But there was, and the dating, you know, I enjoyed, I enjoyed dating, I enjoyed, I loved dancing. Even though he had reached professional success and had built a strong future for himself, he was not all that happy. One day I was listening across the cubicles, because we sit in these little boxes, kind of cubicles, and I heard some of my uh, co-workers speaking about a church that they were going to, and how exciting it was, and how much fun it was to be in church, and meeting all these people, and I thought to myself, what can they be talking about? You know, church, fun, how can that be? He decided to see it with his own eyes. Nicholas found the church full of people his own age, and he decided to help a group of teenagers from that church. For business reasons, he traveled all over the world. But the trip that changed his life was the World Youth Day in Paris in 1997. The same young friend of mine asked me then to, uh, to join him for uh, the Holy Father's World Youth Day in Paris, France, one year. So we went with a community, and I, I was just in, just in awe of the number of Catholics that came from all over the world, thousands and thousands of young people from all over, uh, just to, uh, to be with the Holy Father, to be in communion with one another, to experience this, this bond of, of Christianity that we all have. But I'd never seen it at that, at that scale, that worldwide scale. After that trip, he realized that even though his involvement with the church was great and a prosperous future with his company awaited him, he knew there was something missing in his life, and he knew exactly what it was. I knew the idea of God calling each person specifically to a specific type of work. And I, be I believe that God had called me into this, this work where I was in, in this corporate world. And that's why I found joy there. But now I began to think perhaps he's calling me somewhere else. And I wasn't ready for that. The decision was not easy. After a lot of praying, he decided to leave the prosperous future that awaited him in the company for which God was asking of him to be a priest. The morning that I was, I was to submit my resignation was probably one of the hardest days uh, of my life because I had worked for so many years, almost 14 years, to achieve what I had achieved uh, in my professional life. And now I was to place a piece of paper in a fax machine and hit send and watch the piece of paper disappear and go off to personnel telling them that I was um, resigning and that I wanted to um, take, take time and do something else. So that is what he did and now he says he is one of the happiest men on the earth. He was ordained a priest on July 29th of 2009 in his Diocese of Atlanta in the United States, and he studied theology in Rome, a big change for someone who dreamed of big responsibility with an airline.